for going in and making adjustments to possible data input errors that you might have uh, entered. But just realize you gotta be quite careful with the adjustments. It's, it's very useful in a practice problem and it's useful when you're entering data in real time. But realize, especially when you're trying to look at things that happened in a prior period, you wanna be very careful for, for adjusting them because you have already closed out the prior period. And so you wanna make the adjusting entries in the current period, as opposed to uh, changing the prior period. In other words, for example, let's say that you're, you're a Schedule C type of business. You, you basically then use your profit and loss report in order to generate your tax return. At the end of last year, let's say 2022, you gave your, your, your profit and loss to your accountant, they made your tax return from it and so on and so forth. And then this year, 2023, you determined that there's a problem in some transaction that happened in the prior period. Oftentimes that happens when there's an outstanding check that never cleared, or you're looking at the accounts receivable and there's outstanding transactions and whatnot in accounts receivable that are in error and you need to remove them because you're never gonna get paid on them or something like that, or an accounts payable that's outstanding. So they happen when you do the bank reconciliation or when you're looking at some of these reports related to accounts receivable, accounts payable, oftentimes. Then the issue is, okay, I know I gotta get rid of that, but you, you need to be careful doing that because if you get rid of say a check and the check had an impact on the profit and loss in the prior year, it's going to reverse it as of the prior year and the way and that means that in theory you think you would think you'd have to amend your tax return or something to fix your taxes that's not what you want to do if you already took the deduction if you already filed the tax return we don't want to go backwards in time we want to enter it in such a way that the current period is going to be adjusted for it we want to reverse it in the current period so we we did a presentation demonstrating this with with a avoided check, which is a common kind of example of that problem. So that's one thing to, to just be aware of. Also note that you can lock the the reports uh, in the preferences up top. So if you go to the cog up top, you go to the account and settings, and then you go to the advanced, and then you go to the accounting up top. And this is where you've got your option to close the book. So after you filed your tax return or something like that, you might want to like toggle this on and when you're making adjustments or deleting something to try to fix something it'll give you at least a warning to say hey don't fix this because you closed out the prior year or at least when you do fix it you want to think it through on how you're going to adjust it so so that's something to keep in mind i'm going to close this back out and then also just realize that when we do do adjustments usually from an accounting perspective we would like to make an adjustment by not deleting what happened in the past, but rather by adding another journal entry because that gives you an audit trail of the original error. And if you go back and, and, uh, and, and you, you messed something up when you deleted it, you can at least see the trail of this is what I did. This is why I corrected it. And you can have a story that's, that's happening. But sometimes it's just easiest to delete it or actually change the transaction. So for example, we had a data input uh, error here that we're going to be adjusting for with regards to the furniture and equipment. So if I go into the furniture and equipment, then this transaction, I wanted to enter it for 16,000 and it was entered for 18,000. So uh, if I was to enter like a, a electronic transfer, that's unlikely to happen with an electronic transfer that came through the bank feeds if I was to construct it with the bank feeds, right? But if, for example, I was entering a check and I was handwriting the check and entering the check separately on my side, then it's possible that I do the data input here differently than the check that I wrote, which would come to light when I try to do say a bank reconciliation. And so then most likely the easiest thing to do would be just to go into this transaction and, tr and change the dollar amount in the transaction.